G'day and welcome to AOS Coach. In this video, I'm gonna look at grand strategies in third edition Age of Sigma. What are grand strategies? Why should you care about them? And what are the ones that are best for you? Think of a grand strategy as the overarching strategy and your army's master plan, regardless of whatever battle plan that you might be able to fight on or whichever opponent you're about to face. This is the one goal that you want to achieve when it comes to your army outcome. When you're building your army list in match play, you will need to pick one grand strategy and record it on your army roster. It is the exact same process as when you record down your army spells, the artifacts, the prayers, command traits, mount traits, you name it, exactly the same process. You choose it in your army building and it will carry you through your event. So if you take it to a tournament, you will choose one grand strategy for the entire tournament, regardless of your opponent. Now, this is very different to your battle tactics where you get to choose and change your battle tactics at the start of your hero phase. So keep this in mind. You don't have as much flexibility when it comes to a grand strategy. Now, why should you even care about this? Well, at the end of the battle, if you complete your grand strategy, you're going to actually get additional victory points. You get to add to your tally in addition to the ones you've accumulated through battle tactics, as well as the, the, the battle plans, uh, victory conditions of holding X amount of objectives or whatever the rules might be in the mission that you're playing in. But uh, it is worth three additional victory points in General's Handbook 2021. However, in different battle packs, this, packs, this number might go up or go down. So really scoring your grand strategy will help you either secure your victory or bridge the gap if you happen to fail one of your battle tactics or it actually might even be the difference that that turns a, a draw into a minor victory and when you look at the battle plans in the general's handbook it is actually one of the determining factors of um if, if, if you are both uh, equal on uh, victory points, um, how do you get out of a draw? Well, grand strategies as well as battle tactics are one of them. So in GBH21, there are eight different uh, grand strategies to choose from. You have Sever the Head, Hold the Line, Vendetta, Dominating Presence, Beast Master, Prize Sorcery, Pillars of Belief, as well as Predator's Domain. So each of them are going to reward different builds, and I'll go through each of them, share a couple of ideas. Um, in the meantime, I would love for you to share in the comment section if you have one particular one that you love, and tell me why you like that one. Starting off with Sever the Head. So you complete Sever the Head when there are no heroes from your opponent's starting army on the battlefield. So starting army does mean um, the one that isn't on your army list. That doesn't mean any summoned heroes. So when we see that referenced, it means if you were to summon on a hero, uh, it doesn't count as a part of your starting army. So when I look at Sever the Head, um, and again, going into a tournament, a, a, a three game or a five game tournament, for example, what is the ability and what tools do I have to take down not just my five wound and six wound heroes, but some of these superheroes, Archeon, Nagash, Teclos, Croak, Alario, Morathi, Kragnos, all of these heroes are different. Some of them are going to sit in the middle of the field and they're going to try to punch you in the face. Some of them are going to hide in the backfield and use their long range to punch you in the face. Either way, what tools do I have in my army to handle these types of superheroes? Because th that will be a part of the victory condition, is taking down those five wound and six wound heroes, as well as potentially some really big heroes. So it is going to align to your, your game tactics. Often we want to kill the heroes. We want to shut down command abilities. We want to shut down the general to, to stop that additional command point being generated. We want to stop um, any of the heroic actions. There's a lot of things we want to do to kill the heroes. But really think about what tools do you have and, you know, can you take down the heroes in the middle of the field as well as the ones that are hiding in the back? Then think about heroes like Severeth, the, um, the Lumineth Flying Fox, you know, the one that's zipping around the table constantly. Again, do you have the tools to handle this particular hero? Next up, you've got Hold the Line, and you complete Hold the Line uh, if there are m any battle line units from your starting army on the battlefield. So this is 100% in my control. Unlike the other one that we just said, Sever the Head, where I have to kill uh, heroes, and I don't know which heroes I'm going to be killing, this is about me, and it's about what I can do. So 
how many battle line units do I have in my army and how durable are they? Can they regenerate outside of just rally? And I wouldn't rely on the rally command ability just to keep my battle line alive. You know, things like your skeletons and your chain rafts are going to be a little bit more durable than normal. But this one is going to really require you to think about how many battle line you've got and how do you use them in the game. If they're in the middle of combat, maybe the best option to keep your grand strategy alive is to retreat them out of combat so they don't get destroyed. Do you have the ability to take one battle line that just sits behind, literally plays hide and go seek and goes avoid people uh, as much as possible, it sits at the backfield, it hides behind um, a set of line of sight blocking terrain, something that keeps them out of the battle, but at the end of the game, as long as you've got one unit of, of battle line still on the table, you've scored this one. So, you know, you might mean keeping them out of combat. It might just mean having that one cheap unit that just isn't engaging. Next up, you've got Vendetta. So you complete Vendetta if the model that is chosen to be your opponent's general is slain and your general is not slain. So this is a, a duopoly here, right? I've got to kill my opponent's general. And again, it could be uh, Alariel, Teclas, Catacross, Nagash, Archeon, whoever it might be. Um, it could just a be a Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon. It could be a, a Free Guild General, like a Five Wound Free Guild General. Who knows who my opponent's general is going to be. But do I have the ability to kill a super or a minor hero? And how survivable is my hero? If I've used a, I don't know, a... Um, Medusa Iron Scale, for example, as a, a general because I want to unlock my Blood Sisters as battle line. That's only a five or six wound hero. So if I've taken that to unlock battle line, how survivable is that particular model? Um, because the minute that five wound or six wound general dies, I can't complete this battle strategy. So think about how confident am I to kill my opponent's general? And how survivable would it be? Because my general is going to get additional focus and attention by being included in the grand strategy. Next up, you've got dominating presence. So you're gonna score dominating presence if there are more units from your starting army on the battlefield than there is that your opponents, so starting army. So again, not summoned units, but it's really gonna reward you either for having super durable units, um, Mega Gargants as, as one particular example, that's 35 wounds in one Mega Gargant. Um, if I've got, a few of those, it means I've got a lot of durable, but the minute they start going down, I don't normally have a lot of units on the table. So think about things like, you know, if I have a lot of units, more than 10, you know, 12, 14, if I've got a large amount, or they are super, super durable, I have gone and maxed up some of my reinforced units, and they're really hard to destroy, this kind of rewards me. Think about, again, retreating yourself out of combat to make sure that your, um, your your units aren't being destroyed. And, you know, think about things like your monsters. If you have gone down a monster build, um, they don't traditionally survive as long as they normally do uh, compared to like a unit. So think about um, what what is the right play for me in this one. And do I normally finish a game with my units on the table or has attrition usually kicked off and... Um, yeah, this is an interesting one for me. Beastmaster is is actually going to reward you. I feel like Beastmaster and uh, the one we just talked about, Dominating Presence, is kind of like the, the 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 yin and the yang here. So Beastmaster is going to be uh, achieved when there are monsters still on the table. So this rewards you for keeping monsters on the table. The more monsters you've got, the easier this is going to score. Monsters always attract more attention from your opponent. You see a terror geist across the board, a more crusher, a stone horn, you want to kill it. It's just a natural instinct. If it's a hero, it's going to be definitely more survivable. So things like uh, a durable Nagash, uh, a Glotkin, uh, again, Mega Gargan, Stonehorn, uh, Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon, these monster heroes are definitely more survivable than, let's say, your, your War Hydra or your Cockatrice. But, you know, the more monsters you have in your list, the easier this one is going to be to achieve. However, remember that your monsters are normally in the middle of the battlefield, so they're always going to attract the attention of, mon uh, of spells and prayers and, you know, your, your opponent's biggest damage dealers. So 
they don't normally survive the full five rounds, but if you can survive it around, this is a great choice. So things like Sons of Behemoth, your Ogre Moor Tribes, Flesh Eater Courts, um, Nurgle if you're going to go the old Thricefold route, which had, you know, two or three great unclean ones, this could be a really good choice. Or again, you know, you got that Nagash, it's a super, a, a superhero, super monster, but Nagash is going to take a lot of focus, so keep that in mind. Next up, you've got Price Sorcery. So Price Sorcery is achieved when you have wizards still left on the table. So if you've got a wizard left on the table, you're going to score this one. So your wizards aren't traditionally the most durable pieces in your army. Again, there are exceptions. Your Teclas, your, 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 um, your Larials, your Croaks, your Nagashes. They are, they are traditionally quite survivable. Even things like Arken the Black can be quite survivable. So... If you have one of those wizards, this might be a good choice. For most armies that don't have the, you know, the high wound, high durability, got a ward save, or you might want to get yourself an artifact that gives you a ward save. Things like that, you you you, you might want to consider before you take price sorcery. Um, if you've got like lots of wizards, like super durable, as I mentioned, great unclean ones. You got yourself like a hollow heart build, which has like multiple five or six wound heroes uh, in a couple of hierocarnums or luminarchs. This might work as well. Um, but really think about things like even just miscasting. When you roll a double one on your spell casting and you take D3 mortal wounds, should that happen, um, and you're and you're relying on five wound heroes, that D3 mortal wounds can start popping off your heroes pretty quickly. On the other side, you know, this is similar to um in to, to the last one, Price Sorcery. Uh, but this is based on so Pillars of Belief is based on your priest. So again, it's about keeping a priest on the table. Now, unlike your wizards, and there are some durable wizards out there, I mentioned a few, there is not as many durable uh priests out there. So um I, I was searching, I'm searching, I'm looking at like how many durable priests, and really, unless you like Nagash or Fire Slayers. There's not really a lot of durable wizards that I'd want to bank my grand strategy on, but hey, you might have some secret list tech. Tell me about those super durable priests that are out there. Because most, most priests from my experience are based on five or six rune heroes, and I would not want to risk my grand strategy based on these five or six rune heroes, unless I've got some great master plan that um, I'm a part of. Now, it possibly could work with things like your Huskard on Thunder Task. I mentioned Nagash, your Hag Queen on Cauldron of Blood, uh, even a Plague Priest on a Plague Furnace. These are all units that are a bit more durable than your five or six wound heroes. But again, they often get targeted pretty quickly. So um, keep that one in mind. You've also got Predator's Domain, which is the last of the eight choices. And this one's an interesting one because it's actually not based on uh, killing a unit. It's not about targeting a particular general or a particular um, type of you know monster or battle line or whatever it might be. It's actually based on who controls more terrain than their opponent. How do I control terrain? Well, it's interesting because according to uh, in the core rules, 18.2, you control terrain similar to the way that you would you would score um, objectives. So it's about having more bodies around a certain a number. But in this case, when you control a piece of terrain, the friendly models must be within three inches of the terrain feature. Uh, that's how you can test it. So it's not six inches like an objective, it is three. So if you think about an Age of Sigma table, there is approximately eight pieces of terrain. So you need to be controlling more pieces of terrain than your opponent. And remember as well, you can start off in round one or round two, tag a, a few pieces of terrain early on, and then as you move up the board, continue to score more. So it's not about holding it at the end of the game. You can tag it and kind of move along. But think about things like deadly and sinister. If you're going to sit on a piece of terrain, deadly and sinister could do some damage back to you or sinister could be used against you. Um, so make sure you're kind of avoiding some of maybe the, the bravery based attacks when it comes to sinister terrain or try to avoid taking mortal wound damage off deadly. And probably where you're going to see this particular grand strategy come into play is you play the game as normal, you know, round one to round three 
kind of round four to round five, you start thinking about which terrain features you're going to rush towards. The battle is mostly done. Attrition has kicked in. There's not nearly as many models and units on the table now. And probably turn four to turn five, you're really rushing to score those last pieces of terrain and take over the terrain features. So you're probably playing the long game and the late game as opposed to maybe some of the other ones where you're trying to take down something quite early. So where do I land on grand strategies? And, you know, when I'm building my army lists, this is not something that I think about at the very end. I'm really thinking about this early on in my list. And I'm thinking about what's the best grand strategy that fits me. And if I'm going to a match play tournament, where whether it's a one day tournament that I play three games in, I'm going to a two day tournament where I play five or six games, this grand strategy is going to follow me through the entire tournament and I don't get to change it. And again, I might not ever face a Nagash or a Teclas or an Archeon, but then I might, and I might fight all of them. I, I played at a tournament recently where I played three superheroes. I played an Archeon, a Nagash, and a, and a, a Marathi in five games. So it's very, very possible. Can I handle that? And when I put this, comp this question out to my Discord, I asked them, and you know, what was their most popular choice? they resoundingly all said that hold the line probably was the best one. And I actually tend to agree with them because it's the one that is in most control of mine. I don't have to rely on which, which general I have to kill. It doesn't rely on how many heroes I destroy. It is purely about me and can I keep battle line survived? If I keep that one unit of battle line hidden all game, a five, a five model, a 10 model unit, something that's 100 points or less, if I can hide them behind a piece of terrain, get them not involved into the game and keep them alive, that'll score me three victory points by completing my grand strategy. Otherwise, when I looked at things like your Vendetta or Sever the Head could could really align to your, your game objective. So you're going to want to kill kill heroes or kill the general and keep your general alive. So they're, you know, they're not universally achievable depending on, again, who your opponent's going to be and what tools you have in your army but it could align quite well to what you're already doing. Things like your Predator's Domain is going to be potentially quite popular because people are going to be thinking about the terrain features and it is something that you don't have to worry about till the end of the game. And if you're winning the game, you are going to destroy more units anyway. So scoring terrain features are going to be easier. It's just going to be keeping on track of the terrain pieces during the game and tagging them and making sure that you've marked them to know that you have claimed more. Finally, probably Beast Master would probably work really well for something like, uh, again, uh, a multi, multi Bloodthirster list, uh, Grizzle God with all the Terror Geists, your Sons, your Thunder Lizard Seraphon with all the Engines of the Gods and, um, and your uh, Stegodons. But I think, again, th there's a couple that really stand out for me, but I wouldn't say universally that this is the one single one for everyone because list build, list design, list preference is going to change depending on who you are and what you're playing. But I would love to hear from you in the comment section. What are the grand strategies that you're picking? But more importantly, why? Why are you picking that grand strategy? I'd be really curious to learn from you what you're drawn to, what's the tactics and the ideas that you're building around in order to score it. Am I right? Am I wrong? Let me know what you're thinking. Maybe there's something I've completely missed. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so link is down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigma conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.